Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Lord of Ultima, and I'm gonna do a pickup video blog. I know that's not customary of me, but I did pick up a few games over the last couple months. Uh, mostly old classic games that, uh, you know, just are hit me in the nostalgia really hard and I had to have them again. And I also picked up some custom cases to put these old cartridges in and printed out custom artwork. And I caught up on a lot of my Genesis collection as well. Genesis, one of my favorite consoles. Wait a minute, what was that? Never heard of that game. Looks pretty dumb. Moving on. So, yeah. I guess I should do a video blog about it. It's probably going to be pretty long. Um, so I should preface this uh, collection video with these universal game cases that I ordered on. I ordered them from MediaShelving.com, a hundred of them in a crate. It was like $45 plus shipping. It's a steal. Uh, a couple of them get dinged up during shipping, but you know, you should probably expect that. It's not a big deal. There are a hundred after all. I still have half of them. Uh, they fit Genesis, SNES, EA carts, and also CDs, but you have to do a little modification to get them to work for the NES, which I'll get into. The Universal Game Case, uh, this is the case you see housing all of my NES games and that's obviously because the actual NES cases such as this one uh, are hard to find like usually the carts are alone they don't come with the box or the manual or the sleeve and the styrofoam all that that's in here this is a rare instance that uh, for some reason all the Ninja Gaiden 3's cost like 30 bucks it is the hardest NES Ninja Gaiden to find, but for the, for some reason the cheapest one was one that was complete in box. It even has a uh, manual, and it. it's it's kind of funny because it's got a rental number in here or something. I think that's funny. Oh, Video Barn! <laughs> here we go. Video Barn eight five two five two five two. Give me a call at Video Barn, guys. No, I'm just kidding. I wonder what area code that is. I should see if that's uh, in business. I, I doubt it. But, yeah, usually you don't find them in boxes because all the kids that got these throw these away as soon as they get the game. Because uh, they're cardboard, man. Like, you, you don't think you have to keep them as a kid. You're like, whatever, it's junk. But anyways, yeah, universal case, game cases, universal game cases. Universal, okay, anyways. I got these off media shelving. I got a hundred of them for like $45 plus shipping. Of course, shipping's like $25 because it's across the entire country. But yeah, inside, uh, first let me just talk about the fact that these has a cover sleeve so you can put your artwork in, as you may have noticed. And it fits many types of games such as Sega Genesis. So put Sonic 2 in there, close it up. He's Sega Genesis are the loosest fitting, but they still fit, just barely. They also have the Electronic Arts Genesis games. It's a little taller section, but still the same uh, horizontal layout. It has a CD imprint, which I guess you could put a CD in there. There's a little groove that it fits into. It doesn't actually touch the plastic, but I still think it's kind of stupid. Uh, but it's probably better than a jewel case because those things, they suck. And of course, you flip it this way, then you get the SNES, because they were kind of larger carts. Um, but yeah, you're probably noticing, where do you put the NES? It doesn't seem big enough. And uh, you'd be right, because... Yeah, it, there's just no way that's going to go in there. It's, it doesn't fit. And that's because you actually have to saw off these four clips that would house the Genesis games, for instance. Uh, you have to saw those off with a, either a rotary tool like a Dremel or a multi-tool oscillating. That's what I used. I, I used an oscillating tool with a flush cut metal blade. Of course, a metal blade, one that cuts metal, should be able to cut plastic, and sure enough, it did. So the result, and keep in mind, I had to do this for every single case that I put an NES game in. The result is this. You see little, kind of little scratches where the blade cut, but... This is a sloppy job because this was like one of the first ones I did, which is why it's an example. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the result is those those clips aren't there anymore, uh, and thus NES game rests on this top and bottom thing. 
don't know if you can see that. Right, it's fucking camera. It's reverse window. Can't. Okay. Yeah, thus. Fits in there like that. And uh, closes in there just fine. And it's really... I mean, it, it, it wobbles around, but it's a tight fit because it's almost the entire size of the case. So, that's the gist of it. Of course, you print out artwork to go along with this, which is kind of the reason you get it, because you want everything to look nice and uniform. Uh, but for Genesis games, since they came in a clamshell case, such as this one, it's very easy to collect Genesis games complete. Because, you know, of course, kids see these and they go, oh, this is, yeah, that's solid. Like a hardcover book. You were like, wow, that's fancy as a kid. But a paper book, they always look like shit. Um, this is, of course, a rare example of one that is in awful condition. No, not rare, but I don't, you might not be able to see it. But it looks good until you see the tear right there. And then this is almost split. This is split about 75% of the way up. Yeah. So this is why there's nothing in this case because it sucks. But this was my Mortal Kombat case originally. And, uh, you know, I had to buy some extra games. Which you're going to laugh, but... Uh, yo, Sonic Spinballs. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, there's another NBA Jam. It's faded, so of course I don't want that one. Sonic 2. I got another Sonic 2. NHL 97. The reason why this is in here is because it's all brown. I had... It looks like it was set on fire. I, I, what do people do with their video games? I don't know. Oh, there's little Master Monsters. This is what I printed. Uh, test print. And yeah, test prints look better than the actual labels. There's a problem, right? But yeah, I got many copies of cheap Genesis games complete. Just so I could have extra cases to swap out the crappy ones. And that's what I did. And uh, there's a little handiwork there. Rystar. Yeah. It's pretty good, right? Rystar came in a cardboard box, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, which is cool that I have Rystar in an actual clamshell case. Because uh, it's protected, and it was way cheaper to buy a card only of Rystar. Because, trust me, you don't want to buy used copies of any cardboard game. It's always shit. I also have a couple manuals. Uh, the ones you'd expect. Like Sonic Spinball, Sonic Spinball, and Sonic 2. I have another NBA Jam one as well. But yeah, this is uh, all in the quest to get uniform looking games. So the Genesis games, I want it all to be in this case. Yes, they can fit in this case, but we don't want that because it looks goofy next to this one. It's the wrong height and, you know, wrong, it's wider, whatever, depth, whatever you call it. So that's the gist on cases. So if you're gonna get a collection like mine, uh, you should probably pick up the Universal Game Case Slim, I think they call it, the Slim version. I don't know if there's a fat version, because this is already an inch wide. I don't know how much fatter does it get, but... Uh... Yeah, and pick up extra copies of Sonic Spinball Complete if you want to replace Genesis cases, because they're pretty cheap. Uh, of course, sometimes you can still get a bad case, and the tabs are kind of rare, the hang tabs. Which I like these, but I unfortunately don't have games with all of these. Some of them are missing, so... Of course, Sega had to confuse things, and they didn't make every game in plastic. The only reason I have cardboard cased games like Light Crusader here is because I can buy them new. So things like Light Crusader and Vector Man, you can get these new for like 10 bucks. This is not the original Vector Man case, which was also cardboard, but had the hollow foil thing. This is, of course, the shitty mega value. So <laughs> when you buy these online, you don't know if you're getting mega value. But I guess if you pay 10 bucks, you can assume that's what you have to get. Because these were sealed, brand new. Of course, I opened them because I want to play them. Uh, but the distinguishing feature, other than cardboard, about these cases is that the manuals are all black and white and stupid looking. Uh, even mega, mega hit series is on the side of this, which is awful. Uh, but yeah, I mean, black and white manuals, which doesn't matter since all Genesis manuals are pretty much black and white on the inside. They're all black and white on the inside, man. <laughs> what why does that sound? I'm standing for equality of game cases, you know, they're all the same. 
On the inside, they have the same heart. And I fucking... They get these little pointy things and they catch onto the manual so you can't actually put it back in without doing that. That's kind of dumb. But, uh... Just fucking back... Get in there, Vector Man! Fuck! Wrestling with this asshole. Mega Value. Fuck you. Fuck you, Mega Value. Fuck off. Anyways. Yeah, this was also one that was sealed. And it has the value pack sticker on it already. Like, this shit's cheap. And I don't want to remove it. Maybe you guys give me tips on removing this sticker from cardboard. With, uh, I guess I could just use, like, you know, skin contact. But I'm worried it'll get cloudy. Uh, but yeah, Re Light Crusader even has a UPC that's stickered on. Which is, fuck, how cheap this packaging is. But Light Crusader's great. And if you can get a sealed copy of Genesis game that's cardboard, you're fine. Even though you see that crease, uh... Actually, you can't fucking see it anymore. There it is. That crease right there means that... A lot of weight has been on this for a long time, so probably like stacks of games have been on top of this Leg Crusader for probably 10 years sitting in a warehouse. Uh, which is why you'll get creases like that. Thanks, cardboard, but... Overall, it's pretty nice looking. And I'm gonna throw it over here because it's cardboard. Fuck it, I can throw it. I don't care. This is another cardboard culprit. And as you can see, wow. Do they look way better when you put them inside in one of these cases. Uh, so there's Harvest Moon. Flip it over horizontally. I made sure I kept that layout. And then the labels are all uniform with N64. So this is the benefit to having this is all the cases will look the same. For all your loose cart games and then the cardboard games like these desperately need a case that will you know house the excellent <laughs> harvest moon 64 which is kind of a pricey n64 game also i don't know why but uh yes that's cases in a nutshell i suppose i could talk about uh artwork so for instance rye star here and couple other games we're gonna go over have artwork that's reprinted actually all a couple games yeah 50 of them a couple um they have artwork that's reprinted genesis artwork is a different size than the universal case artwork so i had to make sure this was the correct size and everything but um there is a place called the coverproject.net which has most covers uh and they're all formatted to fit this case when you print it out at full size but you can of course resize them to make them fit Genesis uh, perfectly which is what I did a little trial and error to get that but uh, yeah oh I should also say fuck you whoever sold me Trazia on eBay with your no refund policy yo you printed this label out on regular paper this is not a like new I can see I can see the white tip, the white border on the top where you cut it with your damn scissors. It's fucking faded. It's not even the right size. It doesn't fit the case completely. You know, fuck you. My ca my cover was better. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Mine's better. Mine's better. Look at that shit. Look at your shit. Looks like crap. Looks fucking awful. Looks like shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine is just fucking rich. It's amazing. Yours is... Fuck, fuck you. Yeah, make me pay $35. What I don't understand about that... <laughs> is that... It comes with, you know... Nice label. It comes with the manual. So you're telling me... You printed out a new label. Sold it like new. You even had the manual. Usually this is what they wouldn't have. You know, usually you can get a real label, but no manual. That's why I pay for complete. So, jokes on you, buddy, because this is what I wanted was the manual. There's only a couple games I don't have a manual for, it's like Rise Star and Master Monsters. But all right, enough of cases. Adventures of Lolo. I played this on stream recently. This is one of my favorite NES series of games. It's a puzzle game that's like grid based. And uh, you push blocks around, and the objective is to grab all the hearts to open a treasure chest to then grab a pearl 
which opens the door to the next uh, floor or room, I guess. And there's 50 rooms in total in Lola 1, and it, I'd say it's the most honest of the games. Uh, you are Lolo, and you have to save Lala from the uh, great devil, I think, I guess, or like King Egger, as they would call him in, in the Japanese version. And it's the most honest because the puzzles are not ridiculously hard, and it was very enjoyable. A very enjoyable game. Not just a Lolo. Pick it up. I first played it uh, at a friend's house. I never actually owned it. Most of the games I have owned in some capacity, but not the Lolo series. Lolo 2. This is where shit got real. You had to do a lot of spawn manipulation for puzzles, uh, like cover up an enemy's spawn after you kill him. And by the way, you can shoot eggs in these games. Grabbing the hearts lets you have uh, one of several power-ups depending on the level. And shooting eggs is a typical power-up. They call it magic, I guess. I don't know. And you can shoot an egg to turn them into an egg, and then you can push them around to manipulate them for puzzles. Or you can shoot another egg, which then removes them from the board. But they will respawn. And of course, you'll respawn in a different spot, or they'll respawn in a different spot if you cover their spawn point in this game. Like, But it doesn't explain any of that, so of course you have to figure that out yourself. So I streamed that as well. It's much more brutal than the first game. Uh, here's Lolo 3, which twice as many levels. There's a hundred levels versus the first two games, which are 50 apiece. And it has an overworld map, and Lala is no longer kidnapped. Uh, people have turned to stone or something. Whatever, it doesn't matter. You can play as Lala, there's no difference. Uh, but the funny thing about this, of course, is that uh, it's 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 in German. I, this is the only version of the cover I could <laughs> find. <laughs> I think it's German. Die Reis get whiter. Das Spiel der Best in uns schlaust in East Weiter da mit einem nun in Abenteuer. Off and Twitch, bist du gut genug. I don't know if that's how you say that, but my inner German within me was channeling that, so maybe. Maybe that's how you say it. Moving on, okay. Airwolf. Not a game that maybe people actually remember. And by the way, you'll notice I have the NES uh, insignia here on all of the NES games, just to make sure that they're uh, easily identifiable as an NES game. Airwolf, this is my introduction to Airwolf, the TV series. It was for the NES game. I really liked it. It was kind of, um, it was kind of Top Gun-esque. It was like a first-person flying game where you shot stuff. And there's even like a weird landing sequence that's really difficult. It turns into like a side-scrolling uh, perspective and you have to land and like save, rescue people between like power lines or something. Man, it was really annoying, and I could never do that, but I love it, and I love Airwolf. The 8-bit rendition of the Airwolf theme is amazing. So, Batman! So Sunsoft made a lot of great games for the NES. Batman, no exception. Very difficult, very Ninja Gaiden-esque, uh, but rewarding. I never owned it, but this is a game I found out about recently. What is that blemish there? I don't know. Some sort of smudgy. I have to clean. I don't know what that is. Uh, but yeah, I watched a lot of speedrunners do this lately, like Dexter, who has the world record, and Funk Doc, of course, and Sinister One. And that got me interested in buying this game, because I realized, man, the music's great, and it's a great game. Batman. This is a game that's legendary. Uh, I never owned it as a kid, but I realized its importance, and I was first introduced to buying a Commando through Rearmed. And I love the game so much, and the music that I have to get this game, and it feels like I've played it all my life, you know, it, it, it's very familiar even though I've never played it as a kid. Uh, Buying a Commando is the only game that can get away with platforming with no jumping, so I think that's great. It's a little bit harder in this version than Rearm since the enemies respawn like infinitely, and uh, you know, of course, you can't take hits. <laughs> wow, it's, it's kind of hard, but great, great game. Same with this one here, Blaster Master. It kind of faded here. This is when I ran out of printer ink. Uh, you know, it starts orange, turns pink, whatever. Point is, Blaster Master, another Sunsoft game. Uh, great music, 
pretty long adventure game with some action. You're in side-scrolling tank section, there's swimming section, there's like a out-of-the-tank section where you're overhead view shooting guys. Mega graphics! Mega action! Authentic arcade edition! As opposed to... There were other editions? Like, I don't know, I love the back of the box. Some of the best things in the back of the box. Here's probably the best NES game of all time in Castlevania 3. I don't own Castlevania 1 or 2, you know, there's going to be a lot of things you're going to notice that are missing. 1 and 2, I feel, are just, uh, I own them when you have 3, there's no point. This improves it upon Castlevania in every way, and of course 2 is totally weird and different, and uh, whatever. I just love Castlevania 3, some of the best music in a video game, also, you've seen me beat that, hopefully, on my channel. Fun time. Might speedrun it, uh, pretty good at it now. Deja Vu is one of three ICOM simulations adventure games that was ported to, and I don't want to say ported, it's really reworked, uh, but it was like a Mac slash PC adventure game, but when it came to the NES, these games really shined. Uh, it had the, you know, of course, the sound chip is amazing, and this corner is kind of peeling, it looks like. No, it isn't. Good. Yeah, but this is pretty great. I mean, just like, ouch, thud. Uh oh, shh, bang, yikes, great thumbnails. Uh, this is like Shadowgate and Uninvited, but with the detective spin, but you have amnesia, you don't know who you are. Great, great uh, opening song when you start in the bathroom stall, one of the best. Double Dragon, um, the number one arcade smash, Double Dragon. Except that this is nothing like the arcade version, which is awful. I mean, I'm sorry if you liked the arcade version, but this is really the version of Double Dragon. You'll never have to stand in line to play Double Dragon again, it says. Hey, <laughs> this one's even better. Double Dragon has been America's top arcade hit for the last four months of 1987. That's a selling point. Yeah, this cover, more than anything, was amazing. The title screen music was amazing, and punching women in the stomach is amazing. Double Dragon. Three. Ah, oh, you thought I was going with two? Well, I never played two as a kid, so I don't care about it. I mean, I know three is looked at as pretty bad with the Bimmy Jimmy. Another one that started fading. It's kind of like blue instead of black, but... Um... Uh, I think the game is great, like it controls really well, multiple characters, but of course it's super difficult when you die, that's it. You know, game over. <laughs> that's kind of why I like it though, I mean me and my sister were grinding on this game, trying to finish it as kids, and I don't think we ever did, but we got pretty close. I hear Double Dragon 2 is good, but I don't care, that's the problem. The best puzzle game of all time, Dr. Mario, uh, Dr. Mario's coming! And he's got the cure. Ooh. I don't know what to say about that. Another one that, uh... See, I had to go through several ink cartridges, and when you get to the end, you know you're at the end because the yellows start to go white. And, you know, there's a lot of yellow on the NES box arts, by the way. But, yeah, Dr. Mario... I know the SNES version is better. There's a lot of random pills, or, like, duplicate pills. So, like, for instance, you'll get a red... Like a full red pill, you'll get that like six times in a row sometimes. So I realize the NES version is better, but you cannot deny the music of the NES. Much more iconic than the shitty SNES version, so. Uh, and it's just better than Tetris, in my opinion. Dragon Warrior, this game's like three bucks, so if you don't have Dragon Warrior for the NES... I haven't been opening these, by the way, just because they're kind of a bitch to open. But yeah, they're all there. Um, and I have a little sheet of paper just to protect it from scratching against like a rough edge if I would have cut it kind of rough or something, you know. That's just the precaution. I don't think you'll scratch it, but... Yeah, Dragon Warrior, these games were practically handed out back in the day. I never owned it, uh, but I might as well own it now because I love Dragon Quest series. And this is... they're kind of all the same game, you know, it's very shocking. It has those that annoying thing like where you have to you have to go into a menu to select talk and things like that. Like, that stuff's really antiquated and I hate it, but 
it's very charming, and of course, it's much cheaper than Dragon Warrior 2, 3, and 4, which get way more pricey for some reason. Faxanadu, otherwise known as Fazanadu? Maybe? Fazan? Maybe. Uh, Faxanadu is a Zelda 2 style side scrolling game with role playing elements. Uh, this has like one hub kingdom. And it has, you know, the the notable thing about this game is. Boop, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop. Well, other than that, it's uh, the translation is amazing. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Just translation, great. Did not have it as a kid. One of the games that I seen at a friend's house and he would play it. Uh, so There's typically three games that I'll get on the NES. The first game that I owned in the past and have nostalgia. Game friend played in front of me a lot. Or game that I realize is legendary and must own it. Um, so I guess I should note that you didn't see any Contra. And you will not see any Metroid. And you will not see any Mega Man. So this is just a note, so don't be alarmed. But what you'll see here is Final Fantasy, and uh, this is an awesome cover. It looks nothing like any Final Fantasy cover. It's like a fucking floating city in the globe there. Fucking enter a whole new realm. It looks like a Western RPG in the way it's like illustrated. It includes 84-page Explorer's Handbook. That's a lie. It doesn't. It doesn't include anything, but. Dragons and broadswords, mystery and adventure, Final Fantasy has them all. Oh. It's Final Fantasy. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say. I never owned it. I didn't get an RPG till PS1, so. But I'm a Final Fantasy fan, and I played it at a friend's house after I had played 7. It blew my mind how shitty it was. But anyways, this is a game I did own. James Bond Jr., Apparently this is an animated series. I don't even remember. Oh, yes, I do. James Bond Jr. Is that how it went? I think. Well, it's a THQ game, which is kind of weird. I don't see too many of those on NES. Ah, uh, THQ. Did they just go out of business? Is that what happened? Well, whatever. James Bond Jr. is an awesome side-scrolling action game. It's really long. It's got good music. Uh, this is, wow, what a, cl a classic. And nobody I know has ever talked about it. This is one of the games I wanted to speedrun, which is why I got classic games in the first place. And this was, like, one of the first on my list of, like, I should learn to speedrun this game. Because it is awesome. James Bond Jr., pick it up. It's, it's godlike. So this is an interesting game. Uh, you see me play this. Another game that seems really neat to speedrun. And the game is just, like, very excellent. Uh, I didn't hear about this game until 2013, and I already bought it. Like, wow, I was so stunned by looking at footage of it, I had to buy it. Just the concept alone, that you're some fucking dude that... Ki Look at him, he's... He looks like he's in pain. That's, like, painful. He's, he's kicking because he has to, but it hurts. Like, I pulled my groin. I don't know. He's a lean, mean martial arts fighter. He's the younger brother of the King's Knight. He's a hero. What's a Kickmaster? Sounds like some sort of a ad campaign. What's a Kickmaster? I bet you it was. Uh, Taito, you know? They, they made some good games. A lot of good games on the NES, man. So this game has a lot of kick combinations, and you level up, you get up a mana system to use magic as well. It's really deep. Like, there's like 10 different kicks you can use as you progress through levels with only two buttons. Two buttons, a D-pad, select and start. Somehow you can do all this stuff. And it's kind of like Ninja Gaiden. That's what I'll say about it. That's, that's all there's to say. Kickle Cubicle. This is one I had to make my own box art for. One of the few that doesn't have box art uh, archived anywhere for it so I had to take a combination of like I guess what is the French Canadian slash European version because it has two languages like it says Netherlands here and it says Francois so I think that means yeah it's even in French and English here uh, which means this is probably Canadian version so 
yeah, this looks different, obviously, than the American version's box, but it's the only high-res version I had. And, of course, I just added my own little flares, like the IRM logo, which is the publisher um, of the U.S. version. And I retouched up the logo and made sure the blocks all looked good and the gradient was nice. A lot of work I did on this stuff. But the game, it's kind of like Adventures of Lolo, but you turn people into ice cubes and kick them around. Kickle cubicle, hence the name. Hey, we gotta speed this up. Jesus, Kirby's Adventure. One of the best NES games of all time. Um, the SNES was out when this came out. And it basically took a lot of Mario World elements and put them back into an NES game. It it shows its age because of that. It's kind of laggy because like the sprites on screen and it looks so colorful and the art's really good. It's kind of like Gimmick. It looks really good like Gimmick, except Gimmick runs well. And this has a lot of laggy elements. I mean, you could absorb enemy powers by like consuming them. There are a bunch of enemy powers. You could absorb more than one power and get like a random lotto power and like you could get really broken powers early on in the game like the ufo there was a way to manipulate that um but yeah great music great names for the worlds like ice cream island and butter building <laughs> man look how fucking happy he is to like eat the box art he's just eating there's like scary people up behind there he's angry up there Ugh. Ugh, i'm angry um this is back when Kirby was happy on the box art. Of course, he's not anymore. Now he's pissed all the time. Pissed! Kung Fu, man. This game, probably one of the shortest NES games there is, and it's so hard. And I got a little water drop on there. It bugs me. I might have to reprint that. But the sound effects are very iconic in this. And then he does the kicks. But all the bosses were really tough. And the enemies, I remember, they would run up to you and just, like, give you a hug. And your health would just start draining. They wouldn't do anything. <laughs> no actual uh, punching you and stuff. Well, I mean, there were the guys who threw knives and stuff. But, and snakes. Watch out. Snakes. Yeah. You might know this game. Legend of Zelda. Uh, I have a big soft spot in my heart for this game because my mom played this when I was a child. I'd watch her play it and trying to beat it. Uh, and she did beat it. And this without any guides. We didn't have Nintendo Power or any of that. I don't know how the fuck she beat this game because it's so cryptic now you look back at it. You can beat it in half hour, sure. But that's only if you know what to do. You know, how the fuck did she figure out what to do? Blew my mind. And man, this game is just legendary. The dungeon music, incredible. Uh, both dungeons, G Ganon Dungeon and the normal. I like how, once again, it's advertising extended playing power, maps of Hyrule. I don't got any of that shit in there, man. I just got the gold game. That's another dope thing about this game. Fucking gold. Apparently, there were gray versions of this game. I'm glad I didn't get one. Like it is all too fucking. We'll talk about that until later. Baseball. Major League Baseball. This... Yeah, I know it's LGN. Don't freak out. Just... It's not bad. It's just like RBI Baseball or every other NES game that was baseball. They all play exactly the same. This one just has the license, which makes it fun to, like, look back at old stats and stuff. And uh, this is the game I had as a kid, so this is the one I got. Iconic sounds for me. This is real baseball. <laughs> You've always wanted... To be a professional ball player, but have you ever thought about managing? Here's your chance to prove yourself. I don't know if managing works like that. Uh, game. Brought to life with all the excitement of the real game. I don't know. Baseball's... That's not the thing you want to say. Like, it's just as exciting. Because baseball's, you know... I love baseball, but it's not that exciting. Marvel Madness. Another mega short game. That is really hard. And has intoxicating music. Don't get the Genesis version, though, because that sounds awful. Yeah, Marble Madness. Great game. You're a marble. What else do I say about your fucking marble? I don't know. Hey, Mylons. Mylon Secret Castle. Over three quarters of a million sold in Japan. That's that's uh, quite the feat. 
this is a game my friend played at his house. I never knew what it was called until like a year ago. I would always, I was like, what is that game? And I'd explain it and people would be like, what? But yeah, AVGN made a video about this. And of course, everything AVGN says, oh, it's, it's true. And now we've never played the game, but we should talk it. So everything is hidden in this game. Everything, like it's impossible to beat as a kid, but that's the mystique. You gotta like shoot random spots in thin air to make doors appear. And it's so cryptic, even more cryptic than, than Zelda. But people love Zelda, why wouldn't you love Mylons, man? It's awesome. Hudson, yeah, Mylons. Yeah. Ninja Gaiden, hey Ninja Gaiden. This is a fantastic game with fantastic music. You may just remember the crazy difficulty, but it had these revolutionary, uh, as, they, as they say here, uh, Tecmo's unique cinema display system develops the story stage by stage. Piece together the puzzle while watching movie-like graphics. It, that wasn't that far from the truth. It was actually pretty amazing at the time. I don't know what this fucking blemish is on this one as well. Anyways. What? Special bonus offer? Collect Tecmo's ID badges? What does that mean? Ninja Gaiden. Look at him. He's like fucking got a... The city behind him. He's giant. <laughs> I don't know why. A street... A strategic encounter. The fight of your life. Biggest arcade hit. I like how it says, yeah, arcade hit. Because this is nothing. If there's anything that's further from an arcade game to... The console game I'd like to see it because this is so fundamentally a different and better game than uh, Ninja Gaiden for the arcade great game and you can continue infinitely so even though Japan made it way harder for us we can continue forever until our we blow our brains out Ninja Gaiden 2 of course we got <laughs> one you gotta have two this one's just drives it home. Hard to beat. Hard to beat. If they put that on the front of a game now, no one would buy that shit. People are pansies. I'd like to point out how this is probably the best box art I've ever seen. Fucking dragon with a beard holding like a, an orb. He's got like his sword ready to pull it out and like do the quick kill. Skyline in the background, it looks like pasted on there from like bad Photoshop skills. Uh dynamic action scenes split your body into three that's yep that explains it all the music was better in Ninja Gaiden 2 the physics were different and um, had the environmental stages which made it even harder you could still continue infinitely until Ninja Gaiden 3 so Ninja Gaiden 3 the ancient ship of doom once again the physics changed a bit uh, it still had good music, even harder, and the U.S. version has limited continues, which is ridiculous, and also, I think, you take twice as much damage uh, compared to the Japanese version from every hit. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's something like that, something ridiculous. But it's still Ninja Gaiden, it's still awesome. I do have the original case, as I showed you earlier. Here it is, but you know, I keep it in the plastic case. This is a good comparison of art. Look at I did a pretty good job, I'd say. Pretty good job. Got more sheen because it got that sleeve. But yeah. Shockingly, this is in pretty good shape, this NES box. I don't know how it costs the same as the ones without it. But that's Ninja Gaiden Triss. A lot of fun memories uh, with Paperboy. Paperboy is a game that induces rage, but I loved it. I mean, this was an arcade classic, apparently, and they had the little cowbell music, but that's not the version anybody knows. They know the NES version, baby. That was so good. There was Paperboy 2. But, you know, they introduced a lot of, like, demon gargoyles shooting lasers. And you went on the other side of the street, and it just changed the game. But this is where it started. 
It was the best version. Look at that prick. He looks so fucking... Look, asshole kid. He's like, I just throw papers. Throw them everywhere. I'm an asshole. <laughs> hey, yo. It's my war now. It's fucking Rambo, man. Hell yeah, this is a box I had to, uh... Recreate because... I guess nobody had... Versions of Rambo. Oh. So this is not much like Rambo. Well, I mean, story-wise, it's a lot like Rambo 2, you know, or First Blood Part 2, colon Rambo. Uh, but it's more like Zelda 2 than Rambo 2 because you're stabbing things with a knife, you know, which is the equivalent of the short sword. It's a side-scroller. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts, though, how actually kind of good this game is, and it gets a lot of shit even though it's pretty good. I mean, the hit detection is a little weird, like, your knife hitbox is basically like nothing. It's really bad. But, I mean, overall, it's a pretty good game. Um, you just have to fight a lot of snakes and, like, jungle animals and bees. And, you know, Rambo did that in the movie, right? I think he did. Uh, Rambo. But, yeah, the game I had as a kid, had to have it. Never beat it, but this is a game that oh, I, I also had to completely recreate this box art completely. Like, it doesn't exist in large form all the way around. So I did my best to recreate it. The Jaleco logo and text looks probably better than, and the screenshots look better than they ever actually did on the box. Uh, I had to do the spine logo as well. I had to take several versions of the logo because they had a hand covering it in different spots and I had to like you know retrofit it to make that not the case and yeah but Rampart you build forts then the enemy would come in ships and blow up the walls and then you would build forts again and you would put cannons inside your fort to, to attack back and stuff uh, we ran this a lot me and my sister would play it it was just awesome I know that the Japanese version had like a quest mode it was more RPG like Controls were better, music was better, whatever. This is the Rampart I know. And I love Rampart for the NES. It's one of those things where it's probably better on other consoles, but who cares? I want it for the NES. Russian Attack, a game I didn't have, but uh, I respect it a lot. I had to get it. It's just a great side-scroller. Pretty short, fun game, straightforward. You know, you, Russian Attack. It says it right there, although... You know what it's really trying to say, you know, Russian. Put a I. R U S S I. Take the H apost. Whatever. Russian. Fucking. It's American. Got the American flag on his shoulder. He's killing some Russians. That's what they're trying to say. They're not. They're not explicitly going to mention it. You know, for the kids. But they're really trying to brainwash us to kill a bunch of Russians. I'm Russian, so I'm offended. But the game's great, so that's fine. Fucking Rygar, man. Look at this purple gradient. Black to purple. That's a nice touch. You don't see a lot of that. You don't see a lot of that. Rygar. Over a quarter million sold in Japan. That was the selling point there. Because they didn't know how else to sell this to us. They're like, fucking guy with a shield. I don't know. Lizard climbing a tree. <laughs> but the game is pretty awesome. You have the, you know, shield. Uh, what is it called? The disc armor... I remember playing the PS2 version. I never played this as a kid, uh, but another one that I learned to like through emulators and stuff is Rygar. Uh, pretty difficult and cryptic messages and stuff. Um, it's kind of hard to explain this game, I guess. Yeah. Disc armor? Is that what it is? It's a side-scroller. You do shit, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not a side-scroller, so... Yeah, Rygar. Now I'm just thinking of PS2 Rygar. That game was kind of good. You know, it was, uh... Yeah, whatever. Shadow of the Ninja. Um... A ninja game by Natsume. So, you know, lots of farming <laughs> simulation. No, I'm just... Ninja simulation is more like it. Um, it's a two-player game. So, awesome. Had that over Ninja Gaiden. Um... And it had the hanging mechanic that Ninja Gaiden 3 has, where you can, like, climb on the pipes above you. This came out a year before Ninja Gaiden 3, so this is the innovator? This game's really hard, by the way. But also, once again, 
amazing music and awesome cover. I like that little tilt on the box, like the box art within a box art that's like slightly tilted to the left or right. So that's nice. Uh, but yeah, a game I didn't hear of till recently. Seen someone speed run it and said, yeah, the game's awesome. So, moving on. Probably one of the best NES games. You see me speed run this. Just as a joke, I guess. Uh, but I mean, it could be serious. It's one, it's one of the ICOM simulation adventure games. One of the three. Uh, this is the one that probably everybody remembers for the NES. It had some of the best music. And uh, it had the torch mechanic where it scared the shit out of you as a kid because that music's playing when your torch gets low and maybe you don't have another torch because you've been stumped on these cryptic puzzles for the last hour and you're out of torches. You're just freaking out and, you, and the game's all about death. So, man... And those puzzles are hard, they don't make any sense half the time. Of course, once you know them, you know them, and then it's really easy. Uh, but... Man. This game scared the shit out of me, but I loved it. And, uh, I never owned it, it was a rental. We rented it all the time. Uh... The best part about this game is killing yourself, because there's the self command. And, you know, you could stab yourself with a sword, or, like... You could stab yourself with a hammer, which I don't know how that worked, but it had the same text as the sword, but they just replaced it with hammer. You plunge the hammer into your chest, but man, look at that cover. What the... That was fucking awesome. And this was a German cover as well, by the way. I had to retrofit it with the, the uh, English uh, back, you know, so it's kind of a custom cover I had to make. I was not going to settle for German on Shadowgate. Hell no. Snake, rattle, and roll. This is a, this is like a English slash uh, French version again. Nibble, pible. Ha <laughs> ha. Snake Round Roll is a very difficult game with good music, a good mechanic. The ice, isometric camera was kind of confusing because you'd want to move, you know, up, but you'd want it to go straight up and it would go this way and as a kid that's just confusing I still can't really get my head around it unless it's a strategy RPG or something but the in the end they go to space hippity hop tippity they're in space yeah and the moon's made of cheese or something yep snakes in space there's supposed to be a sequel and snake rattle and roll in the Genesis which had much worse music, uh, did have an extra <clears throat> segment that was in space, an extra level or something. Super Mario Brothers. That's... Yeah, Super Mario Brothers. Um, this is the Duck Hunt version, but I ain't putting Duck Hunt on this cover. That's dumb. That game doesn't exist to me. Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers 2. Maybe you heard of it. Better than the first. Super Mario USA. Excuse me, not not lost levels, not that crap. Uh, plays Toad. Plays Toad. Runs faster. Pick up thing, yeah. Plays Toad. And Super Mario Brothers 3, obviously the best Mario ever created. Definitely one of the best NES games. One of the best NES boxes. Look how that's yellow. It's so yellow, and guess orange man yeah and the wizard had a, a help in making this game as successful as it was I'm sure great music great levels fantastic game wow better than Super Mario World that's for sure <clears throat> Mario World sucks turtles They all had red bandanas in the front. That's the first thing you'll note. Uh, comic books for Turtles, they did not have the distinguishing colors, which is, this was based on the comics. It even says so on the back of the box. It says, fresh from the classic comics, come heroes in a half shell. I kind of like that, that they all had the same bandana. It's kind of cool. Distinguished by their weapons and their personalities and not fucking color. I like it. I think it's neat. This game is not bad either, for the record. I mean, you remember the seaweed section. It's not even that hard. Dude, play it today. There's not really any trouble. I don't know. Some of those jumps were annoying trying to get those pizzas. But 
overall fantastic game. Uh, nothing wrong with it. And then we skip right to Turtles 3. Because Turtles 2 is so far removed from the arcade version. And it tries to... The arcade game, you know, that's the subtitle. Uh, but it's so much crappier than the arcade game that it's not worth getting. You know, that's the version I remember is the arcade. But Turtles 3 is a unique game that is like the arcade game. It's a beat-em-up. This looked amazing on the NES. It had amazing music. Uh, this was like my introduction to special spam for beat-em-ups because it took your health. But when you got down to one health, you could still keep spamming the special moves. Uh, which is why you would just pick Raphael and do the cycle crusher back and forth across the screen. I gotta do a playthrough of this. I have to. A lot of people are nostalgic for Turtles in Time. I'm so nostalgic for this game. I have to. But it's really hard if you don't know exactly what to do in each scene. Um, but yeah, of course they have the colored bandanas there and stuff, and there's a fucking triceratops in the background shooting a laser beam. Which, that's cool. The third of the three ICOM Sim Adventure Games. Un uninvited. And they had, like, a chronological order, I guess, on the PC slash Mac. But here, they all made... They must have all came out around the same period of time because they all make references to each other. So it's like a circle of light, like an infinite loop, I guess. Like, Uninvited has the Deja Vu guy's tombstone. Um, and, you know, when you play on the uh, gramophone, there's like a really distorted sounding Shadowgate. Right? But then when you go to Shadowgate, when you play the flute, you get the Deja Vu theme, right? So that's pretty crazy, and I'm positive the Deja Vu makes a reference to one of these two, maybe both. I don't remember it. Guys, help me out with that. Uninvited. The scariest by far. Uh, once again, the, the great... Ooh, arg! Gulp. Crash. <laughs> yeah, you start out in a car wreck, and if you stay in that car too long, fuck catches on fire and you die. And I'm examining, because I'm like, I play Channelgate. I'm going to open up the glove box. And it's like... <laughs> it's oh shit! And then the, the lady in the hallway freaked the fuck out of me, man. He had to get the no ghosts. And, uh... So many things kill you in this game. You pick up a red gem in a dresser. It doesn't tell you what the fuck the deal is. And I'm not that observant, so I don't notice why I start dying all of a sudden. But basically, when you pick up the red gem, like every seven rooms or so, or five, you'll die over and over again. You can keep continuing, and then it'll take you back to the previous room. But then another five rooms later, you'll die again, and... And it's like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to beat this in 10 turns before I die? Like, I didn't know. I didn't understand it. But yeah, just don't pick up the red gem because you'll die. I, Dude, I don't know. I, what a weird thing. But yeah, there's creepy old... Yeah, she's... Look, ha! Ah, scary, Scarlet Johansson. And of course, we have one of the best NES games. Again, Zelda 2. The Adventures of Link. Not like Zelda 1 at all, but there was only one other Zelda at the time, so not much to compare it to. So I don't know why people would be disappointed in this game, because it was difficult, but the gameplay mechanics were so solid. It's such a good game. It plays so well, you know? I mean, NES games don't typically do that. They feel a little clunky, uh, but this game is just super reactionary and, like, crouch jumping stabs and... Keeping your forward momentum while attacking and like the down stab was a really essential uh, attack to get. As opposed to the up stab which was useless. But I love watching speed runs of this game. I just love the game. It's palace theme. Once again, knocks out of the park. The palace theme is just like the dungeon theme from Zelda 1 in that it's amazing. Um, this is also the latest in the Zelda timeline. So I hear. So that's my NES games. We still got a couple games, such as Legacy of Darkness. Uh, this is Castlevania 64, but the improved version that had Cornell, which was interesting. Uh, it has an expansion pack. I didn't know that it used the expansion pack, but what did it use it for? I think it just increased the frame rate or resolution. 
but yeah, that just fixed a lot of bugs. Added a new playable character. This is the version I liked. Though in hindsight, I'd rather have the original because more buggy is always more fun. Uh, this is known for having the worst camera in existence for N64 games, which is saying something because... N64 games all have bad cameras. Surprise, none of the games hold up to me. Uh, so, I mean, if you can deal with that, I still think this game's pretty good. It's not a bad game. It's just awful camera. Terrible. Harvest Moon 64, I showed you. Uh, you watched me play a bunch of that. I gave up on this because my greenhouse blew away or something or it was stolen. But holy fuck do I love Harvest Moon 64 and Harvest Moon in general. One of my favorite franchises of all time. It's so relaxing to play this game. And uh, marry one of the many fine bitches on the, the farmlands. Yeah, that's pretty much it. This is a pretty bare-bones version of Back to Nature, which was the PS1 version. Obviously, the PS1 superior pretty much in every way, as usual. Uh, but this is the version I remember renting a lot. So that's why I got it. Holds a special place in my heart. Ocarina of Time. Game was great at the time. I think it's kind of bad now, to be honest. It's not, you know, I don't even like Zeldas that are 3D. I just kind of... At the time, it was great. Amazing. Now you play it and you realize it runs like 20 frames a second or something really terrible. It, it just runs really bad and slow. And I, I do love the noises they introduce with Link. You know, all that stuff is... Uh, Pretty good, but... Rush 2! Extreme Racing USA. This is the version of San Francisco Rush that got a lot of scrutiny, uh, was overlooked, I guess, but most importantly, it had stunt mode, which is the whole reason to play this game. Fucking stunt mode, holy fuck. Stunt mode is amazing. Like, damn it. Damn it, stunt mode. Guys. I know that the other Rush 2049 or whatever it's called has like wings come out of your car, but this stunt mode is the purest form. It's awesome. There's no scoring system or anything like that, but you can just kind of... I think there is actually. Yeah, there is. No. I don't know. Maybe we went by like who got the most flips who they would win or something. Me and my friend Joe plays all the time. Fuck. Still, I mean, he's in the army or whatever, but he comes back. We could easily pop this game in and be having fun instantly in stunt mode. Man. You know, fuck the N64, but damn it, that game. Amazing. This game, on the other hand, you know, I'm a big Shadowgate fan, but... Uh, oh, this game, Shadowgate 64, is not a lot like Shadowgate. Uh, let me see. Can you survive the mystical journey of the first-person 3D fantasy? Whatever. Chemco. I don't know if it's a bad game, but it's certainly weird and not like Shadowgate, so. Uh, that's all for Nintendo-related product. Let's go on to the Genesis. I was a kid that I didn't have a Super Nintendo. We went the Genesis route, and that's the only kind of household that we have here. Okay? Well, fuck with Super Nintendo unless it's Yoshi's Island, uh, Chrono Trigger... Or maybe Killer Instinct? That's about it. Fuck that other shit, though. Donkey Kong Country 2 sucks. Anyways. Alien 3. It started out with a banger. Uh, this was a multi-platform. It came out on the NES. <clears throat> came out on uh, SNES. SNES had like this weird hub worlds kind of system. But in hindsight, going back, when I play classic games, I want classic-ass games. This is a action, side-scrolling, platforming game. Mission-based, uh, time, gotta rescue people, objectives, etc. Ammo to manage, climbing through vents and shit. It's nothing like Alien 3 because you got all the classic Aliens guns, but it is like Alien 3 and like a lot of the areas are from Alien 3 and it's tied to it story-wise a little bit. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is like the NES game but much better. Uh, some great atmospheric sound in the Genesis, not really music, though the title music is pretty great. Uh, and it's just a really difficult game, no continues, you know, just lives and then that's it. It's kind of long. I think even if you are to speedrun this, it would probably take like an hour. Nah, maybe 45 minutes or something. 
Uh, hey, this is funny. <laughs> Back of the box. Can't see very far ahead in these air ducts. Hard to breathe. Face huggers can be everywhere. Must find a queen alien. The closer you get, the more aliens you find. Better not have them find you first. Just keep telling yourself, this isn't really happening. It's only a game. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I cannot say this enough. Great game, overlooked. The ladder climbing system maybe leaves a little something to be desired. You gotta be holding diagonal <clears throat> down or up, depending on which one you're going to. Um, but yeah, a great game. Alien 3. Let's not harp on it. Arcus Odyssey. This is the first in uh, renovation games that you'll see, but not the last. That's kind of glary. You'll see renovation. Renovation happened to publish some really cool ass games in the Genesis. They did do a couple SNES games as well, uh, but Genesis is where it was at. And look at the box art. Nothing like Genesis box art. It's not that black or red standard that they have. All of the renovation games had this custom box art that were all different colors and had awesome illustrations on it and stuff. I, I just think it looks cool, man. It's just a cool game. And uh, getting this complete, you know, it was a little bit of money in, in the condition that it was in. Thank God, it was nice. Uh, but this is an arcade <laughs> style, isometric shooter, I would say, because each person has a projectile even though they're like holding a sword or whatever he shoots a wave out of a sword uh, but it's like isometric shooter kind of exploration game with RPG elements you have MP and things like that and I just love it it's an awesome game I've played it on stream I'll probably play some more of it uh, when I get the time right now I'm a little busy one of the better Genesis games Castlevania Bloodlines is a great Castlevania that is always overlooked. Uh, it's a little different in that, like, the sub weapon is handled differently. You get, like, a super sub weapon, but you have to, like, not be hit. Or, is, no, you have a super weapon, right? You can level up your weapon to level three instead of two, where you get two whip upgrades or whatever in the normal Castlevanias. You get three weapon upgrades. The third one happens. Uh, after you like break 30 candles or whatever without getting hit or you get this Bible that's in the wall of stage one and like half the time it'll give you a weapon upgrade to super but the thing is you lose that it does a lot of damage but you lose it once you get hit so the tactic is just not to get hit in this game so that's what makes this game challenging uh, you do have two characters you can play as the spear guy has like a super jump the whip guy can like swing from the ceiling and stuff uh, whip guys generally considered better but spear guy has an easier time maneuvering through the stages because of the super jump thing one of my favorite tracks of all time video game tracks uh is in this called iron blue intention it's just it's an awesome game it's it's great i never played super castlevania 4 as a kid so i don't have that memory but i have this and what's interesting about this is that it takes you to a lot of weird locations that uh like back in like world war one like german munitions plan and stuff that's just crazy like it took castlevania where it hadn't been before which since then it's been a rehash of itself over and over again so moving on there's a game called devilish uh this caught my eye last year because of Hitoshi Sakamoto being the composer. He's the composer of Final Fantasy Tactics, Final Fantasy XII, uh, Vagrant Story, among others. And this is a vertical shooter slash Arkanoid clone. I don't know how to describe that. You have two paddles that you can control. Um, fuck, it's, it's... But sometimes it goes horizontal as well, but... The fail state is the ball going past the paddle. It's not... Or the boss. You know, there's different bosses. The boss destroying the ball, for instance. Uh, it, it's it's pretty crazy. I don't know... Yeah, it's it's a very unique game. And I was lucky to find it. 
because uh, no one had this in box. And it's in pretty awesome condition as well. It's like fucking brand new. Which is great. Devilish. Weird game that nobody knows about, I'm sure. War is the Eternal Sun is a game I never owned. And I never played until recently, but I'd always watched my friend play it when I went over to his house. Another friend game. And this game was awesome. It had awesome music. It had like the uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons kind of formula. I think it was like 2.0 rule set or something. Uh, although some of the stats don't come into play. They, they're in the game. Like the characters have this stat of whatever charisma or whatever, but doesn't do anything. But yeah, it's an overhead like world map. RPG, uh, you wander the fields and you'll get random battles, which then it goes into like a weird turn-based thing. And in dungeons, it goes into the first-person perspective, uh, where you're just like going forward a step at a time, and then you can fight enemies that way as well, kind of roguelike. Um, my mom will swear that Dungeons and Dragons is the work of the devil. Still to this day, she thinks that I'm going to become a murderer every time I play it because of that one case that happened. But yeah, some of the best Genesis music in this game. What a great game. Great game. All right, more renovation, baby. Gyrez, the best horizontal shooter ever. Period, the end, done. Don't need to explain any more about it. Gyrez is incredible. It was like anime cutscenes. They had these giant ass bosses. Every one of them like filled the entire screen. It was incredible. And the best part was that you had an option ship that stole enemy powers. You did not have typical power-ups. You shot your option at an enemy and you took its power. And then you had that type of weapon that he used. And then if you shot it a couple more times, you could upgrade it to like level 3 and it would be awesome. Uh, and there were hidden weapons too, like special conditions. Like get your score to a certain number and then capture this ship or whiff your option like eight times and then capture this or something like that you get like these overpower weapons man it was great trying to find out all the weapons uh but the game is really hard so maybe a one credit clear in the future i'd have to practice though uh but guy res is a game i ran it all the time and i could not figure out the name for the life of me for years and then i finally did and i bought it light crusader you see me play this for the first time when I got the Sega Genesis Classics on Amazon, uh, the download. And I had to buy it. It's a game by Treasure, and it's amazing. It's a dungeon crawler, isometric dungeon crawler. You, know, you go down floors, it's under the city. It's kind of like Diablo in that sense. Uh, it has some great music. And it's just a solid game overall treasure you really can't go wrong and it's only ten dollars sealed which I means I guess nobody has any good feelings about the game or something I don't know why it would be ten dollars on the other hand a game like master of monsters is a fortune so you're probably wondering man you got master of monsters is crazy this is uh an empty case that I printed out artwork for Master of Monsters because there's no way I'm spending a hundred and some dollars. So I got a loose cart for like 30 I think. And uh, no manual, obviously. But, you know, I'll have to deal with it. At least it's in a nice case. The interesting thing is it's got these clips on the side like that. They got the teeth or whatever. It's like an electronic arts case, except it fits a regular cartridge, which makes me doubly confused because, you know, electronics art... Electronic art cases are a little bit thicker than the average Genesis case. Like a little bit wider. That's why the label kind of like comes onto the spine a little bit. But uh, yeah, Master Monsters is a strategy game. It's got hexagons. I love hexagons. And it has probably the best Genesis song in a video game. One of the best video game songs ever. I think it's like Beneath the... No, what's not beneath the steel sky? That's like a fucking game. Whatever. Something under a sky. BGM 6. It's amazing. It's like a monster summoning uh, takeover city game. Tactics. Bonanza. 
Mazen Saga. This game is really hard. Uh, Genesis is known for its arcade style beat em ups and such. This is another one of those. When you went to fight bosses, you would go into a side scrolling like 2D fighter mode, and that was pretty awesome. They looked like huge, the sprites. Just huge, it was awesome. And uh, it just looked amazing. It was just an amazing looking game. I, I just like how Earth is not a pretty planet in the year 1999. <laughs> yeah, 1999, it was rough, guys. Remember that? Uh, Mutant Fighter. Mons yeah, I remember that too. No, but really, this game's great. Really hard. I don't know if I'll ever attempt to beat this on stream. That'd be... Yeah. <laughs> uh, boy, this game, MA13, you know, shout outs to MA13, not even MA17, that was MK2. This, they're like, ah, we can put this rating on it. But ABAC, ABB, this is the blood code. This is the version to have because of the blood. Absolutely. Um, the best around, Mortal Kombat. Certainly, the Super Nintendo version was more like the arcade in that it played better and looked better. But this is the version to have. And I think the music, the sounds actually sounded a little bit more arcade-like to me. Especially the music. Like, man, play that one. It's great. Another arcade classic. Midway. Getting the bangers, right? NBA Jam. Okay, NBA Jam TE, of course. It's the enhanced version. Another version I feel is superior in the Genesis uh I think it had like more hidden characters or something but yeah that sound is mis unmistakable and the soundtrack on the SNES is a little more freeform it's not uh as close to the arcade I actually have two manuals in there obviously because I had an extra copy of NBA Jam which is uh, right here see you want a copy of NBA Jam let me know NBA Jam is a crazy arcade game that when it came home on the Genesis I couldn't tell the difference. Like, I mean, maybe you can now. Obviously, we're not stupid, but as kids, we're just like, it's just like the arcade. And it's just crazy. He's on fire. And, man, great game. He's on fire. He break the backboard. Fucking incredible. This is uh, NHL. There are a lot of great sports games in the Genesis. I mean, I'm not saying they weren't good on the SNES. Here's an example of an EA case. But, of course, this one's a proper EA case in that it has a manual that's Shorter than the thing that holds the manual for fucking some reason. Look at this. It doesn't clip in on under this side because it's too short. And that means it just falls everywhere. Right, but it has the same clip style as the other case. But, you know, it fits the EA cart, which is this stupid tall cart. I don't know. Yellow thing. I don't know why they did that. Man, that's dumb. And the book is short. What are they doing? Anyways, NHL games were awesome back in the day. This is the last 2D NHL game. Because remember, the NHL 97, they also went to PS1, and it looked like shit. Nobody wants to collect that version. Uh, I think they brought back fights in 96, or is it... Or, I don't remember. But I thought about getting 96 because it had Red Wings and the Devils in the front. But, you know, 97 is probably superior, though I can't tell the difference. Hey, it's Rystar! Except in a nice case, Rystar is a Genesis cult classic, great platforming game, uh, very colorful, Sonic-esque in that sense, good music, a cool mechanic of like the stretchy arms you pull yourself towards enemies and like objects. I really like it. Uh, I played it actually for the first time this year, and then I had to get it. Once again, this is a game that's expensive like Master of Monsters, so I had to get card only and then put it in a Sega case print out the art the good part about that is that Rystar was a cardboard box game and they're all squished in a hundred and some dollars and look like crap so I'd rather get card only and then put it in a nice case right look how bomb that is fucking amazing let's continue on uh, good platformers here Rocket Knight Adventures from Konami incredible game uh, I didn't know about this until I seen it speed ran, and then I had to buy it, and it's amazing. 
you are a little like mouse dude thing. I guess his name is Sparkster, like the sequel. He was called Sparkster. And it just got like good maneuvers. You got a sword, you got like, you know, fucking jetpack and sliding around on the ground really fast. And like the levels look cool, the backgrounds. Man, just a great game. Rocket Knight Adventures. Uh, Genesis was really good at that kind of game. I don't know why they didn't make more. And here's another side scroller that's awesome. People remember Shinobi from, you know, uh, what is it, Return of... No, Revenge of Shinobi, right? They remember that goofy one that's actually not very good. But, yo, Shinobi 3, you got, like, fluid movement. You're fighting on a horse. You got a dive kick. You're in a fucking surfboard and shit. Oh, my God. You got the little... You still got all these cool ninpo move things. Like, commit suicide and you can, like, waste a life. But, like, basically kill the boss in one hit. And uh, the strategy here is, of course, not to get hit because you get the pow power up thing, which like makes your uh, kunai's do triple the damage. I, I was trying to think of what the fuck that was called. Kunai, that's what it's called. Sonic Spinball, man, I got a lot of these. Unfortunately, Sonic Spinball has to be in the ugly case, and you know that's just the way it worked out. But uh, Sonic Spinball. Is the game I got my Genesis. I got a Genesis 2 late, late era Genesis uh, when Spinball was packed in with it, and I had a lot of fun with this. I never beat it. I think I got to the last stage, and this game is really hard. Pinball itself is kind of random in the way physics works, so it kind of drove me nuts as a kid. But I look back with only fond memories of this game, and I really love the music, as metallic and like ear piercing as it sounds. It it just brings back a lot of memories. Of it. Great game. The only other Sonic game I have is Sonic 2, which I'd say is probably the best Sonic game there's ever been uh, overall. I mean, a lot of people talk about Sonic 3, Knuckles, or maybe Sonic 1, but that didn't even have Spin Dash. This is kind of the sweet spot, mainly because it had a Chemical Plant Zone, which is right there. Man, that song rips. And it just looks so cool and futuristic. And you had Tails following you around, you could make him die all the time, you could make your friend be Tails, and you could be an asshole and just make him drown. Oh, and it had that 3D, whoa, man, it was 3D. Best music, I think the best stages, I think it's the best Sonic, for sure. Um, <clears throat> maybe I'll get three Knuckles at some point. They were also great, but... Streets of Rage 2. Yeah. Fuck, man, this beat him up. It was a ripoff of Final Fight, and I think it surpassed it in the end. It became better, and the music sets it apart for sure. I mean, Street Rage 1 looked kind of rudimentary uh, compared to Final Fight, but this did not. This was amazing, man. Look at this fucking 16 megs. 16 megs of gigantic, I don't know, power. The description on the back is so brutal. It's just so many... Go maniac with jaw shattering, bone busting punches, head cracking jump kicks, secret weapons, gangs of dirt bikers dive into you from every side, smash them with a pipe as they speed by. Oh. 16 gigantic megs of compound fractures, all new moves, and more of them. I love this game. So many fond memories, and I never owned it. Always went over friends' houses back in the day, and I'd see them playing it and think it was the best thing. Fucking, I remember Nail. Flipping around with his claws and shit. Now I'm sort of a savant <laughs> with that game. I'm pretty good at it now, but at the time I sucked ass. Tracia, another renovation game. This is uh, kind of like Warriors of the Eternal Sun in the way it's got the four party members and their their stats on the side. And you explore town, but then you go out into the wilderness and you're getting those like turn-based sort of like cursor battles. I just love the main theme of the village, the very first village you're in. That sold me on this game. Uh, it does have a weird little lag issue where it like hitches up when you're walking every like second and a half. It's like hitch, hitch. And I thought it was an emulator thing until I bought the actual cart. Uh, this, yeah, this is a game I'm not, I haven't played until recently, by the way. But uh, I actually liked it quite a bit. But that hitch problem is an issue in the actual version. I did not know. I thought it was just emulator. I was wrong. 
but it's a renovation game. It's awesome. Triple play. Uh, a lot of people don't even know triple play started on the Genesis, but it did in triple play 96. I think they renamed it MVP baseball eventually, but this is the second triple play on the Genesis. And this is the equivalent of 97, but it's just triple play gold edition. As you can see, it doesn't have the MLB license, so you can't like put the teams there. So he has like no team there, but I think he has a team on the cover of 97. It's the same cover, you know, but it's a completely different game because it's, you know, 2D baseball goodness. And it's, it's just amazing. It's like 96, but, you know, updated rosters, you know, for what that's worth. It does have the player association uh, license. Vector Man. Mega hit series, whatever. This game looks amazing. It's a very late game platformer action game for the Genesis. And I thought this looked better than anything the Super Nintendo put out. They had like polygonal 3D model kind of a thing going on with Vector Man. The gunshot noise is amazing. The first <laughs> theme in the game sounds like the Chicago Bulls theme. That's pretty interesting to me. And it's just a great game. Yeah, Vector Man, uh, year 2049, look out. The world's going to be a toxic uh, waste dump. I mean, that could still happen. We don't know. It's not the year 1999, like <laughs> Mazen Saga. But yeah, Vector Man, a fantastic Genesis game. Everybody should own it. And it's cheap, man. Let's not forget uh, Vector Man 2, another cardboard game. Vector Man 2, you had the ability to like turn into animals or something. It was really weird, but I think overall the game was better, better stages, a little more atmospheric, like a lot of darker stages and like cool music to go along with that. And you fought a lot more bugs. I guess you always fought bugs in this game, but experience fluid real time vector piece animation, pulsating sounds and vibrant graphics through 25 levels. 25 levels and you can beat the game in 10 minutes. But yeah, Vector Man 2. Probably better than the first, but overlooked. East 3. Uh, East 3 is a very difficult game on the Genesis and the SNES. It was also on the Turbo CD, I believe, uh, which had voice acting, which was terrible. Uh, but it was a little bit easier overall. And of course, I have better music. I mean, what your definition of better is CD music, right? A renovation game, once again. This version is the best version because of the music. The Genesis music is incredible. And it is most like the Turbo CD version, and it's like widescreen aspect ratio, and the colors are more rich and vibrant. And it just overall looks better than the SNES version. The thing about the SNES version is that uh, the final boss is so cheap that I, I don't know what they did. That port was just so terrible. Uh, whereas this one is much closer to the Turbo CD version and uh, more nostalgic for me uh, just because of the way it sounds. And it's it's a side-scrolling Faxanadu or Zelda 2 style game, but it has a lot more RPG elements than those either of those games. So uh, East 3. You know, you know East for the top-down Zelda 1 style thing, but this is more of a Zelda 2 style thing. So, it's my favorite East game, though I like all the East games. Um, covers badass. Fuck, look, he's fighting a bug over here. There's, like, wyvern thing over here. Orc knights. Fucking Dogie over there. Dogie's supposed to have blue hair, but I guess, you know, in the illustrations, they just made him look like cheesy fantasy guy. Uh, I always call him Doggy, but, you know... Man, great game. A lot of great renovation games. A lot of great games on the Genesis people don't know about. So that's all the games I picked up over the last couple months. Uh, it's quite a lot, but uh, thanks for sitting through it if you did with me. Uh, it's good to find I have all these in cases and nice artwork and they're all working and clean. Ah, and, you know, if you want to buy something, buy it now. Like, don't wait because they don't make these games anymore. They're not going to get cheaper. Uh, so that's why I wanted to buy them all within a short time frame, and I did. Uh, so look forward to a lot of classic games in the future. Maybe some cross tekken maybe? But a lot of classic games. Uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. So I will catch you guys later.